how often is your dad calling you still coaching you still telling you you know like oh you didn't do this right or you didn't do this right oh. or <laughs> and almost after every game i can really? say <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's really not just him my mom too yeah. <laughs> What up, everybody? Welcome back to season two of the Players Podcast. My name is Kyle Hines, and today we have a very special guest. Um, he's by far one of the greatest scorers in EuroLeague history. Um, he's been an all EuroLeague player, a two time EuroLeague scoring champion, a EuroCup MVP, um, an Olympic medalist. Um, you know, what more can I say about this guy? I mean, me and him have had plenty of battles. You know, when I switch on the pick and roll with him, you know, put me on the ISO. Um, but he's definitely one of my favorite players and one of my favorite guys to compete against. So Lexi Shved. Lexi, how's everything, man? Hi, hi everybody. Everything great. Uh, happy to talk to you here. Uh, so good. Let's go. <laughs> great, man. Great. So after nine seasons being away, it's nine seasons, right? Um, nine seasons being away, you uh, you come back to Cheska. Um, so, you know, first off, you know, what is that the return, you know, been been like for you to, you know, to come back to the to the club where, you know, you started off as, you know, as a, you know, as a young player? Yeah, you know, I'm so happy to come back, uh, especially after last season, we have a lot of problems uh, in Hinke and everybody knows this club not playing a uh, year league anymore. Uh, and uh, I talked to my agent and I say the only one club I want to play in CSK. Because uh, this is like my home club. I play uh, here before I go to the NBA. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people, they still uh, working there. They stay there, uh, players too. And I'm just happy to, to come back. Uh, they teach me a lot how to, to play basketball, how to be out of the court too. And uh, this is a great organization. Uh, uh, you know for sure, <laughs> there they, there is only way there to win, and uh, they work hard. And uh, I'm excited to come back. Has it been strange for you, you know, after being you know a rival, you know, you know, playing the Derby games, you know, with Kimki and Cheska, and then playing in so many you know VTB finals and you know so many games? Um, has it been a little bit strange for you coming back, you know, after you know being the rival for such a such a long time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a little bit strange because long time uh, I wasn't there and uh, I play against you guys. Uh, uh, actually, you play a lot of years there and uh, it's really hard to play against CSK. And when I came came back and play uh, together with the guys, uh, I played uh, against them for a long time. Yeah. And this is a little bit strange for me, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it's okay. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is the life, this is the basketball. Uh, some years you play one team, then you change, uh, go to the other team. So, um, what I like, like I said, I'm happy to be back and uh, play, play hard, play uh, uh, for results, uh, and uh, uh, just be one, uh, one of the part of this uh, great, uh, great team, great club. Now you uh, in Kimki, you had a different role, you know. In Kimki, you were, you know, score. You know, you were kind of the go-to guy. Um, you're coming back to Cheska, you know, a different player, a more mature player. Do you think um, in the beginning or even now has it been a little bit difficult for you to kind of come back and, you know, Cheska? You have so many great players, you know, between you know you, Will Clyburn, uh, you know, Toko, you know, so many I can go on. So many I can go on. Miratinov. Um, you know, so many players that you have there, um, you know, that are great. So has it been a little bit challenging for you to kind of, you know, have this different role of not necessarily being, I guess, like a primary scorer as you were in the past with Kempi? No, uh, when I come here, I, I know it's not will be the same and mm -hmm. not even closed. And uh, this is great when you have a lot of players um, around the team who can score any day, uh, 20 plus points. And we have a lot of great players. Um, and I'm, I'm ready for the any role. So <laughs> I play a lot of years. I play 35 plus minutes uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, have 20 plus every game. Yeah. And uh, this is really hard. And now I know like we, we came here uh, to show good game and uh, play for, uh, 
for the first places. So I, I know it will be a little different for me. I cannot say it's difficult uh, mm -hmm. because um, uh, I know how to play uh, <laughs> any roles. Uh, yeah. they, if me to score, I can score. They know about that. So I just want to play smart, good basketball, and uh, that's it. I think, in my personal opinion, I think that, um, you know, you are going to get a lot. I think people are going to respect you a lot more, you know, with your role in chess. Because I think everybody, you know, thinks you just as a scorer. But like I said, I've seen you play and I've known you and I know the guys on the national team. And you're more than just a scorer. You're a player. You're a creator. You know, you're a defender. You're an all around smart basketball player. So I think it's going to be, you know, a great role. And I think people are going to respect you even more, in my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. I can say, yeah, I'm a smart player uh, and uh, uh, I can pass the ball really good too. Yeah. And uh, really when I play against you, I hate to play against you. You know, yeah. this, uh, when you play <laughs> this sweet, you play so hard and it's really hard to beat. Them, but, the same. Uh, yeah. And uh, we will see everything what we need. We need to win uh, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, CSK, they always play final fours and. Uh, uh, this is mean something. Uh, so we want to we wanna try to uh, go this year too. And uh, we will see this just on the beginning. And uh, we have uh, some new player coming. And uh, we just started to build a team. Yeah. But the uh, good thing is it's a lot of uh, uh, like experienced players. They stay too. So they're going to help them. Uh, and uh, I hope we will have a really good team this year too. Yeah, I think so. Um, so why number 91? When everybody thinks about 91, they think of Dennis Rodman. Um, so why did you why did you choose that number instead of, you know, you know, your uh, other numbers, any other number you could have? I know, that, but the funny stuff, uh, like uh, uh, we stay with my wife in the restaurant yeah. and, and we talk about the number, what I need to pick. And uh, uh, we talk about, OK, this number, uh, somebody have another number, uh, they have two. So I'm thinking, <laughs> Okay, let's pick the number I never play. And we start thinking about what is the numbers like looking good. And we start yeah. talking about the players. And actually, yeah. we talk about Dennis Rodman. Said, what do you think about 91? She said, yeah, I like it. We start, I talk to my family, my parents too. They say, yeah, we like this number. So let's take it. And that's how I choose it. <laughs> that's dope, man. <laughs> that's, dope. that's cool. That's cool. Now, we, we talked about um a little bit about um, you said the, the team goals and, you know, Cheska is known for, you know, winning Euro leagues and, you know, competing for Euro leagues. Um, you were a part of the Euro league team in 2008. If I'm not for sure, you were a young player. Um, yeah. what, what would it mean, you know, to be now, you know, like I said, an older, more mature player in, in 2021 to win the Euro league championship? Mm. But if we go back to, to, to 2008, uh, I'm not, I don't play a lot there. Yeah. You know, like I was uh, actually, I more practice there. And uh, I'm happy to be the part of the guys who won that time. Because that time we have a lot of great players like Jerry Hunt, Chad Langdon, Dave Bantrupo, Dave Anderson. There's a lot of guys. Uh, Matthias Modis, and mm -hmm. they teach me a lot, like uh, how to play offense, how to see the uh, the game. And uh, now I came back with a different role, and I know I can I can help a lot uh, to the team. And uh, uh, you know, it's hard every time; it's a lot of pressure to CSK because um, they think uh, a lot of people think it's uh, they go easily uh, yeah. all season. Uh, uh, there is not true. Uh, it's not. <laughs> it's really hard, yeah, because we practice a lot. And uh, um, after losing the game, everybody really uh, unhappy and sad. And, uh, <laughs> you know, after losing the uh, game, will be really good practice next day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's always a tough day, the next day coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like I said, uh, I want to help. Uh, I want to help them to win the title. It will be really, really hard and uh, a crazy way. But uh, we need to try. And uh, uh, I picked the CSK too because uh, they always play for the result, and mm -hmm. uh, they're not the team who who ready to lose few games in a row. There is no way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here it's uh, 
I cannot remember this. So yeah. um, we will try. We'll see this uh, this year. How has it been with uh, Coach Atutis? Like I said, you, you played against him for so many years, but how has it been, you know, so far the first couple of months working with him? You know, uh, I like him uh, now. Uh, he likes discipline. Uh, uh, he uh, talked to all players, uh, put some pressure too. And I talked to them, to him uh, before I signed contract like three times. And mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the roles, what he wants from me. Uh, what he expect uh, and uh, uh, right now I can say he's uh, like you know this too he's uh, one of the best coaches in uh, in Europe and uh, for sure he's not the guy who who happy to lose even one game <laughs> so, not at all <laughs> not at all <laughs> not at all yeah so I like it now and uh, how he talked to the team right now uh, like it uh, it's like I like it mm -hmm. Now, we talked to, so much about your present. Now, let's go back to your past. Um, growing up, you know, how did you get started with basketball? And, you know, who were your, like, your basketball idols growing up? Like, who were your basketball heroes when you, when you were a young kid? Uh, yeah, actually, when I started playing basketball, if you don't know, I have parents. They're, like, coaches, yeah. basketball yeah, yeah. coaches in Russia. And uh, uh, he has, like, uh, five players who play VTB League. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, different uh, like years uh, and uh, I have sisters they uh, one of them she played uh, for the Russian national team the other one she studied in uh, United States mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they both play uh, good basketball and I have no choice you know <laughs> when I get six basketball yeah. family <laughs> yeah family you, even their husbands they play basketball you know <laughs> this is the so uh, until I get six, uh, they give me the ball and say, go. <laughs> <laughs> go practice, go all day. This, this is it. This is it. This is all you can do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you remember when, like, uh, when uh, I was young, when you were young, uh, mm -hmm. we don't have this, uh, uh, we don't have internet, nothing. Yeah. Uh, and we just, like, we don't have in, uh, even CDs, <laughs> you <Exactly>. know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, sometimes I watch basketball and I like uh, a lot uh, Allen Iverson mm -hmm. uh, on that moment, uh, how he played the ball and uh, um, how he scored too. But for sure, like the best player uh, is Michael Jordan for yeah. me. Uh, I can watch him a lot. And uh, now you have now you have uh, everything to, to play basketball. You can see like all games you want. Uh, you can... Uh, see the how coaches uh, practice other guys yeah. in my time I, I don't have this yeah that, that's what I was going to ask because yeah. like you know even as for me growing up in the U.S. you know we have you know you can watch NBA games and different things like this but like you said the, the kids now you know we didn't have YouTube we didn't have streaming we didn't have all this stuff yeah. where you can like you know watch yeah, games right. over the internet so like for you Growing up in Russia, like how difficult was it to watch like a, a NBA game or like a, a, a any you know besides I guess like your local basketball games you probably weren't watching any games right? I don't need like uh, I don't watch basketball you know, even like we don't have it you know yeah. sometimes <laughs> uh, uh, sometimes uh, they put it on TV but this can happen like one time uh, a month I don't know yeah. and. Uh, if you see some some moves, some like fadeaway shots, uh, you have no time to see this one more time. You know, <laughs> you just need to just remember from first time. And what uh, time after this, yeah, one time, and after this, uh, uh, you go uh, to the gym or you go play outside and you start practice this move. And uh, you cannot say you go this right or wrong. You just mm -hmm. uh, practice, repeat it like I don't know, hundreds, two hundred times. Yeah, thousand times. <laughs> and, uh, it was great time. I remember uh, in summertime when I well, and when I was like 10, 11, 12 years old, and uh, I eat breakfast and go outside, and I, I come back maybe around nine p.m. and it's... all time we play on the streets, uh, yeah. we play basketball. It, it was great time. Yeah, I yeah, tell I, I, I tell the kids this all the time. Like I'm like. Like they're inside playing video games all day. And I'm like, when we were younger, we would just 
leave the house in the morning time yeah. and we wouldn't come back until the you yeah. know until it got dark outside and all day playing basketball playing you know, all this different type of stuff with friends and stuff like that i was like these kids don't they don't we even never understand stay it. Home. Like, no we never i remember no. that like yeah, man, that was that was the good times. Now, when you, when you were younger and you were those ages, did you dream about playing in the NBA or playing like you know professional basketball, or is it just just something that you know just just happened? You know, I I dream about play uh, professional basketball, but mm. uh, it's really hard. You know, in Russia, it's really hard because it's not too many ways to to go to the league, especially yeah. from like uh, like me from small hometown. And we not even close to the basketball town. Yeah, we don't have any team there, and um, the only uh, the only I, I start play basketball because of my father, and uh, he teach me like a lot, and uh, uh, I I respect him, and I'm so happy. Uh, he teach me how to play basketball, how to get this money. Yeah. To, yeah. Now he stopped uh, teaching uh, kids too. He moved to he moved to Moscow and he stayed next to the gym to see SPT. So. <laughs> so that's what I, that's what I was gonna ask. Like how so so how often now now that you're a professional player and like you said you're all your league scorer you know one of the best players in the world. How often is your dad calling you still coaching you still telling you you know like oh you didn't do this right or you didn't do this oh. right or. <laughs> And almost after every game, I can really? say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really not just him, my mom too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you get it from both. And you have to listen because they're your parents. So it's not like yeah. you can be like, no dad, no mom, this. Like you have to you have to accept it, right? Yeah, yeah but I don't uh, they just want to help me and yeah. do best. And um every preseason before train camps, I go work out with my dad too, like for three really? or four uh four. Three, four weeks maybe sometimes five weeks yeah we work out together and during the season too last year he stayed in moscow sometimes he came to the practice mm -hmm. uh, me and him we uh, working out with my shot or mm -hmm. with defense uh, something else and uh, but that's the, their life yeah. even uh, now he stopped teaching uh, uh, somebody uh, play basketball uh, he play a lot with my daughters mm -hmm. and now, like my my youngest one, she start uh, she start uh, walking. She make three steps, and she, he said, "Like, hey, this is travel. You need to make two <laughs> steps." <laughs> so, so I'm I'm guessing your daughters don't have a choice. They're gonna play. They're gonna have to play basketball too. It was up to their it was up to their grandfather, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> grandmother. I don't, I don't really, yeah, yeah, but if he won't teach them and yeah. they really like it, why not? This is their choice and um, their life. If they want, okay. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Now, when when did you realize that your your dream of playing professional basketball was going to come true? When I moved to CSK and they start uh, bringing me to the main team mm -hmm. to, to practice and um, they bring me not like one time, two times. I remember when these days I, I have no day offs <laughs> at all because you practice with the first team mm -hmm. and then if then they have day off you go back to the second team you play games there then you come back and i remember like i have two months without day offs mm -hmm. and it's normal like right now some young guys they start like crying about uh, oh I, without day offs three weeks i said come on man, you're 20 years old like <laughs> years old. before 25 <laughs> stop asking stupid questions man this is <laughs> go true. work out this is true yeah so, so and um when I when they bring me uh, to the main team and uh, I start just practicing playing games with them, then I start feeling like uh, I can be a player, I can be a good player, and uh, I have a lot of questions to the stars that time, and they like they really helps me, uh, especially they teach me how to be out of the court too, mm -hmm. and this is really important for me, and uh, thanks for them and. This is good experience. So, so when uh, when did you? Sorry, my daughter just walked in. She said hello. <laughs> hello. Um, you want to say hi? Let me say hi real quick, Sarah. Hi. Hi. How are you? You said how are you? How are you? 
Yeah, I'm good, good. How are you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Alexi, shut Hi, how are you? Good. You gonna speak Russian? Good. Say привет. Привет. Say kind of show? Oh, you remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'll be done in a little bit. Yeah, so beautiful day. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your uh, your daughter's birthday party was really nice, by the way, too. Me and we were talking. Me and my wife seen it um on uh, Instagram, so it was, oh, it was really yeah. good. <laughs> um, it was right. fun. Yeah, it looked it looked amazing, man. My wife, she's like really big into like event planning and stuff too, so she was like looking at everything. So it was it was a good time. Uh, all right, let me get back to it. When it, so when you got to the NBA. Um, you know, when did, how was that feeling? Even like when you, you first signed with Minnesota, you know, you played your first NBA game. Is it like, was it like a dream come true? Was it like a surreal moment? Uh, yeah, but before the first game, but I, I still don't realize like I, I signed contract with the NBA team mm -hmm. and uh, all my life I st stay in Russia, I play in Moscow. And uh, this is the first time I, uh, go out of the Moscow, go to to United States, and uh, this is different culture there. There is like more games, and I remember like I really nervous my first game, uh, but after this one I feel okay. And uh, the good things is uh, K forty seven, he signed contract with Minnesota too. So first my year, he always said to me like what to do, where could to go, because you know if you go to Russia. If you take like apartment, if you rent an apartment, you have everything there. But if you rent something there, you need to buy all stuff. Yeah. You know, or furniture, <laughs> so like everything. I remember my last year when I got traded like two times and yeah. I go to one place, buy everything. In one month, they say you get traded to the other stuff. <laughs> oh, this is again. I need to bring my car. So this, this is like really hard. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Did you have like a like a fan moment, like when you played against somebody? Like I remember when we played CSK, we played against the San Antonio Spurs, and I, I seen Tim Duncan for the first time, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like that's Tim Duncan. Like, did you have like a moment? And during one of your games, it was like, "Oh, that's Kobe Bryant," or that's what's the name? Is like, did that ever hit you during you know during that time? Yeah, for sure. Like uh, Kobe is one of them, but. Uh, in NBA, if you go any team, they have the stars. I remember, uh, yeah. So every like all my year, uh, I was shocked because uh, uh, the guys I watch on TV now I need to to step on the court and play against them. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, uh, I play against Grant Hill. This yeah. so it's a long, long time ago. This yeah. is like uh, stars from nineties and. Uh, the first time I see Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. I, I was shocked too. Yeah, but he wasn't player, but I saw him on the game. And uh, you know, D Wade, LeBron, there's mm -hmm. a lot of guys there. And but I remember the hardest guy. Uh, I play uh, I play defense against him. And this is uh, Jamal Crawford. Yeah, he he was like he was like 35 that time, but yeah. he's so fast, and yeah. you just need to you have two ways: uh, stop right or left, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> even like like uh like roulette like russian roulette you know yeah. <laughs> it's like which, you, which you gonna, know, yeah, you, what bullet are you going to take because he he could do everything he has a ball like on the yeah, string yeah. if yeah. you stop him you like <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely this what were you most nervous for your first uh and you could pick the three your first nba game your first european professional game or your first Olympic international game? Which one was more most nervous for you? I think most most nervous uh, my first NBA game. Yeah, because my my first like yearly game, uh, coach put me on the court when we like up twenty points. So mm -hmm. I cannot be nervous on yeah. that time. I nervous a little, but I know it's like uh, uh, it will be a short time. Like, there's like one two minutes and we're done. But my First NBA game, I'm really nervous. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I play with the guys uh, I watched on TV before, mm -hmm. and now I need to show them like uh, I can play too. And uh, 
and my Olympic like national team, I'm never nervous. So yeah, I play a lot of there, and I start practice with them when I was like 17, 18 years old. So it's not that not not that bad there. And, but my NBA game, yeah, nervous, I'm nervous a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want to talk about the the Olympic bronze medal when you guys won in 2012. Um, you know, you had, you know, probably the, the the clinching moment where you know kind of took over that game. Um, but what was that moment like for you and to share, you know, with guys like AK47, like you know, like DK, Victor Krapa, and you know, all these guys. What was that moment like for you? And then, you know, as you know, Russia, you know, has such a, a rich basketball history. And, you know, for you guys to win that medal during that time, you know, what was the that I can I can imagine that like the medal presentation when you're standing there and they give you the medal and you hear like the Russian, you know, national anthem. So what was that like overall experience for you during that time? Uh, I remember just we was we were uh, so happy on that time. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was the first uh, medal. Uh, Olympic medal medal for Russia because yeah. uh, before it was the US third time mm -hmm. and they have medals but we not and uh, we have a great team that time uh, like you said to Victor Hryapa K47 Sasha Khan yeah. Moscow and a lot of other guys and uh, we work hard before we go to qualification to Venezuela we play there mm -hmm. and uh, after that we have short time to rest and then we move uh, to to the London, uh, it was and it was. I remember it was tough game against Argentina. Mm -hmm. They have big start that time that year too, and we won just in last maybe thirty seconds, twenty five seconds. And before it was tie game, and uh, uh, we still talk about these moments when we stay together, when we go to the restaurant mm -hmm. with uh, with the cafe. Uh, we still remember that time and. Uh, it was great time, mm -hmm. uh, great atmosphere, good people, and uh, great win too. Yeah, amazing. I can't. I can't believe that it was ten years ago. It's like, man, like where where does the time go? Yeah. Like it seemed like it was <laughs> like it was just yesterday. And now look at this. It's ten years past. Like how how often are you are you looking at that bronze medal, or how often do you know do you do you keep it around, or is it like in a secret place, or? You just every once in a while you just you brush your teeth and you look at the medal or <laughs> what are you doing with it? Yeah, I, I look at the medal, but uh, I give this medal to my parents and every yeah. time I go, sometimes mm -hmm. I ask them to show me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. Ten the uh, ten years left, and when I step to CSK, they show me the picture of my first year at CSK, <laughs> and I'm like, this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, man, ten years ago by, man. I could, I remember, man. It's, it's been such a, such a, such a long time, but it's been, been a great ride, man. You've had, you know, such a great career, and you know, I think that you're going to have, you know, plenty, you know, plenty more memories and plenty more great moments. But now I want to talk about the Alexi Spev off the court and talk about some of the things that you're doing off the court. Um, you know, some people know, but not everybody knows. Um, a lot of people in Moscow know, but you are a restaurant owner. Um, you own one of the most, I guess say, in my opinion, one of the most popular, one of the most popular restaurants, um, you know, um, food court restaurants in, in Moscow, a restaurant by the name of Mac and Cheese. So first of all, Mac and Cheese is an American concept. It's an American dish. That's how people describe it. How did you develop this concept of Mac and Cheese and what inspired you to want to open up a restaurant um, in Moscow? But actually, this is my my wife. Um, okay. She, yeah, she she want to open this restaurant, and um, that time we play in NBA, she yeah. really like making. And, and uh, we came back to Moscow, and after a few years, we start talking about we have everything in Moscow, like something like potato with meat or with some yeah. rice and all the stuff. It's everywhere, but we don't have the mac and cheese in Moscow, and uh, we take. Uh, uh, the the chef who helps us, you, mm -hmm. you actually you know him, the guy who started helping us, this Marco. Yeah, he has lost. Yeah, him. yeah, he's good, our friend, and yeah. he helps us uh, a Marco. lot. Uh, it takes like it takes like maybe one or two years to mm -hmm. open the restaurant because we don't want to open some some bad stuff, and uh, we try to to make it better and better and. Uh, 
you know how many, how many times you 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 like you there right yeah, yeah. and a lot of like uh a lot of guys go there uh, mm -hmm. like uh americans russians mm -hmm. um even like uh uh regular people who don't even know me they yeah. they go there if they time they always come back because every time i go there i see the same not same faces but i see some somewhere i see him and i yeah, just yeah. start remembering like this guy was here like a week ago yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah and people really like it uh, and we improve uh, everything it was my when we were in moscow it was my daughter's favorite favorite place to go favorite restaurant to go so like anytime we went to depot or anytime she was home and she was like oh what do you want to eat to dinner she was like mac and cheese so i always have to go to the depot get mac and cheese and then come back home but like she she loved it like we we, we really enjoyed it um how often are how how often are you uh at the restaurant are you you know you back there you know chefing it up cooking the mac and cheese or you know how many times during the week are you are you there Okay, I just want to say so. Next time you go to Moscow, bring your yeah. family and go there too. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, man, for sure, <laughs> for sure. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so we have new positions, and actually, uh, like in summertime, when we have a lot of uh, like uh, time when we mm -hmm. have off season, we go there a lot. Like last summer, I go there like two, three, four times a week, mm -hmm. and uh, I need to just to check there how it's going. And uh, before, like COVID, uh, COVID situation, uh, the it's it's going really good and mm -hmm. really great. And uh, after everything stopped and they closed all restaurants, all food courts, uh, finally this time uh, done. And mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, people start coming back, and uh, there is a lot of guys stay next to the mac and cheese. And actually, if we want to go there, maybe uh, tomorrow, maybe Sunday too. So we need yeah. to. <laughs> I like mac and cheese. Too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For, what What is your What is your favorite thing on the menu? You know, uh, uh, I like. Uh, you try hot dogs there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try. I like yeah, them a lot. Yeah. I like hot yeah. dogs. Uh, Pepperoni, bacon. I, I like uh, mac and cheese with chicken. Mm -hmm. There's actually a lot of positions there, and it's uh, the people what they like. Uh, uh, the next month, it's uh, it will be uh, travel season, so we have uh, travel travels. mac and cheese. Uh, yeah, travel mac and cheese, and uh, actually, the guy who bring uh, travel to the main. Uh, uh, Restaurants in Moscow, uh, really popular. This the same guy bring us too. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you need to check if you maybe maybe you can play next uh, next month to yeah. Moscow. Yeah. Next time we come, I'm, I gotta I gotta I gotta stop. Like uh, I'm for sure. My daughter's gonna be like, can you can you bring back some for sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Let Let's go. How many? Uh, so how many? How many uh, food courts are you guys in? I know of the two, I think for sure, the depot, and I think there's, I know of another one. Um, but how many food courts are you guys in now? And, you know, what is the goal? What are like your future goals for mac and cheese? Uh, now we have uh, three, three mm -hmm. spots. Uh, uh, all of them works good. Mm -hmm. uh, two, two works really good. And uh, uh, for sure, I want to open, uh, I hope, uh, want to open more. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a few of them in Moscow, and then I want to move to maybe Saint Petersburg. Uh, actually, I want I want to have mac and cheese everywhere in Russia. <laughs> yeah, that'll be. <laughs> I, mean, I think that'll yeah, be great because so, I mean you, you're basically introducing mac and cheese to to Russia technically because I mean there's not there's no yeah, like you said there's so no any people, spot so. A lot of uh, a lot of people ask me about to buy franchise uh, mm -hmm. to open. Uh, Mac and cheese, uh, other cities, but I don't want to do this right now. But yeah. later, for sure, I want. Yeah, I want uh, work uh, this way. Is there is the restaurant industry or business something that you want to get more involved in? You know, once your career is over, um, not only mac and cheese, but there are there other restaurants or other you know other type of restaurants yeah. that you would like to get involved in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We want to open uh, other restaurants too, but now it's not a lot of time because yeah. if you want to work this way, you need to, to be free, like free. You need to spend a lot of time there. And now, like when I play basketball, I don't have this time. And uh, maybe when close this day, I'm yeah. tired, open for sure. 
for sure restaurants i like this stuff and uh uh we're gonna go this way too for sure yeah, you gotta you gotta do it uh international man. you gotta do uh i know you i know your your family's in in la sometimes too but you gotta you gotta bring a mac and cheese to the states man bring it to la but you know, we think about that we think about that and uh when i when i stop playing yeah. uh, I will try for sure. Yeah. Hey man, let me know, man. We could we could partner, man. You could be Mac. I could be Cheese, man. We could partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, what would what would your advice be to um you know to other players or other people that want to get involved in making a restaurant or building a restaurant? Like I said, you've you've been you've done it, you know, on a successful level. So, you know, if you were to give advice to anybody else about you know wanting to start their own business in a restaurant, what would it be? Uh, one more time because I, I can oh I said uh if you wanted to give advice to somebody that wanted to start their own restaurant um what would it be you know if they asked you for help or they asked you for some you know some wise wise words you know what would you tell them oh uh no for sure uh, uh, I'm gonna help them because it's mm. uh, it's it's a lot of small things because uh, yeah. you know, uh people want to spend good time with the good food and uh with no stress so, <laughs> so a lot of style stuff uh, a lot of um, uh, points you need to do and uh, uh, actually uh, I like like natural food you know yeah. I don't like when people are putting some uh, uh, bad stuff to the food and it's it's a lot of uh, a lot happened uh, in like not in Russia everywhere yeah and sure. uh, and uh, for sure, it should be natural. Uh, this food must be uh, good, uh, like for the kids, and mm. uh, to to do like uh, everybody. Mm -hmm. And they need great chef. Uh, plus, they need to have the guy who uh, they can trust him. So mm -hmm. he need to control everything. This this lot of small things. Like I said, we spent two years to open the first spot we can open this earlier but we need to be sure like everything uh, will be okay everything will be great and this is not too, this, that easy too so we need they need to think about that like uh, mm -hmm. not one two like 10 20 30 times see for they like they really want to open this because it's really hard yeah i agree I and agree. first 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 few months maybe year you spend mm -hmm. a lot of time there and there is a lot of questions, a lot of problems every time something happened. Uh, but uh, we are lucky because we don't have the guys who say like they don't like mac and cheese or mm -hmm. there's some problem. Uh, most of the people, they text us uh, every day and uh, they're happy mm -hmm. to be there to put. And uh, this is uh, really hard to build this yeah. stuff. I can imagine, man. I can imagine, man. But... So my last last two or three questions before I let you go. Um, these are the questions that some of the fans wanted to know. Um, what is one thing that most basketball fans don't know about you? One thing, you know, I think they know everything about me because there is so many interviews and I started playing basketball. <laughs> time ago, I think the, like they asked me about uh, everything. So. Yeah. I cannot remember the things I, I never say, but I think I say Everything. all of them. <laughs> yeah. Who is your favorite opponent to play against in the EuroLeague? Is there like one player, is like one matchup that you would have that you like, you know, you look forward to playing against, um, you know, every every season? Mm, you know, um, I can say I like to play against strong teams. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, Strong def defenders too, like you. I like play against you. Uh, actually, I don't like to play against you and like it. I know same, it's really hard. Same, yeah, same, but I like same. pressure. I like to play against Corey Higgins too because mm -hmm. he's great defender too. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is more fun if you play against really like best, hardest team. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's what I can say. This way, I like more than I, how we like play against like easy teams. Yeah. Like no, no, like it. Yeah. You need to be concentrated. You need to be ready. But uh, we cannot say we like this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I like. I know. Like when we played against each other, I knew there was going to be a point, like in the fourth quarter, like the last two minutes, where we would switch, and I knew that it was like, okay, I would have to guard you, and it was like, okay, 
either you're going to score or not going to score. Like I will always like look forward to those moments. Like, you know, we start the game, start the game. But I was like, I know when it comes down to it, you know, we were going to switch and we had to play against each other. And it was always, like I said, it was always fun. Like I always, I always enjoyed that. Yeah. was always like my favorite part of like, you know, playing against, playing against Kimpke and playing against you, like the switching moments and, you know, us going back and forth, you know, that was, that was always fun. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. The last question that the fans wanted to ask is where is your favorite place to play on the road in EuroLeague? Uh, on the EuroLeague? Uh, I can say I like to play where it's, uh, where it's good weather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the perfect answer for somebody that has played in Russia or, or yeah, Moscow. They know, understand. Like, <laughs> Yeah, winter time Moscow is cold, so every time we go to play like to Madrid <laughs> or Barcelona like, or something like this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have two great days there. <laughs> I don't I can, need to wear my jacket. <laughs> yeah, I, I can remember when uh, you know when we would go to Barcelona or Athens. Literally, like before we get on the bus, all of us would just be standing there and just outside, just wait, like just standing in front of the sun because, like you know, in Moscow you don't yeah. see any sun, but. But yeah, man, that's, we don't have the, uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, last question. What advice would you give to a young basketball player that wants to be professional or wants to be successful? What advice would you give them? I just can say they need to working out a lot uh, and uh, they need to watch uh, some great players, their moves and uh, how to play basketball. Uh, they can see some TV shows because it's uh, really easy to get right now. And mm. uh, if something's going wrong, uh, they don't need to think about that. Prevet, Prevet. Hi. Hello. Cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. So just need, they need to, to work out uh, and uh, they don't need to listen to nobody and not a lot of people wants uh, them to have successful. So they need to, they need to be positive and, uh, and just working hard, hard like, like us, spend more time outside, play basketball, exactly. don't play a lot of video games. Yeah. <laughs> listen to the coach. <laughs> exactly exactly well thank you man i'll let you i'll let you get out of here man spend some time with your family um i appreciate you man appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to you know jump on this this uh this podcast with me and have a great conversation oh um, man i wish you a lot of success um look forward to playing against you very soon you know hopefully we'll have a couple more matchups and stuff like that so best of luck all the best to your family say hello to your wife and everybody for me and everybody at cheska and thank you. And yeah, stay healthy. Have a good season. Next time you come to Moscow, text me. We go together to make a cheese. For sure, for sure, man. For sure. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> I hope see you soon and good luck too. All right, brother. Take care. Yeah, see you, bro. Subscribe to the Players Podcast to listen to more conversations with your favorite player about their careers and interests off the court. You can also check out Upwa TV and GTM Family Productions on YouTube for more content. Thank you for listening.